Our special speaker this morning is Erica Harold. As Miss America in 2003, Erica Harold promoted the community service platform Preventing Youth Violence and Bullying. She served as a delegate to the 2003 Republican National Convention and was a featured speaker at that convention regarding the importance of faith-based prison reform initiatives. Ms. Harold was born and raised in Urbana, Illinois, and is a Phi Beta Kappa graduate of the University of Illinois. She graduated from Harvard Law School in 2007. Since graduation, she has worked as an attorney and represented businesses in commercial disputes and advised religious institutions in matters involving First Amendment protections. Additionally, Ms. Harold serves on the board of directors of Prison Fellowship, the world's largest outreach to prisoners and their families, and has presented faith-based messages in prisons throughout the country. She is currently a congressional candidate in Illinois' 13th district and is pursuing the Republican nomination. Please welcome Ms. Harold. Good morning. Good morning. I think this is perhaps the most formal and exciting start I've had to a morning. It was, it was a real treat to watch the way you start every morning, and I was really impressed with the precision and the focus that you had. And I wish that most people had the kind of precision and focus that you have. You're in a very, very impressive group, and I'm really honored to be able to be here. I'll speak to you for just a few minutes because I know that you're standing and when you have to stand and listen to someone, you want them to keep their remarks brief. But what I wanted to come and try to encourage you with today is the importance of setting the goals that you want to achieve in your life and not letting obstacles deter you. When you hear my biography, probably the first thing that would stand out to you is that it seems like I was able to achieve a lot of the things that I wanted to. But I, what I would tell you is that when my life started out, I had a lot of obstacles and I didn't think that I was going to be able to achieve the things that I wanted. When I was in the ninth grade, I faced a lot of bullying and it was because of my racial background. My mom is part African American and Native American and my dad is Greek and German. And so I was the only person who looked like me at my school. And the bullying escalated all the way to vandalism of property. We had to call the police to our home about eight different times in that year and ultimately escalated to death threats. And it made me feel very much like I didn't have any power over who I wanted to be. And it made me wonder if I was going to be able to achieve the things that I wanted to achieve in my life. Ultimately, I had to leave that school. But when I left, I realized that I had a choice to make. I had to decide if I was going to let the people who had been bullying me have power to define me or if I was going to define myself on my own terms. And ultimately I decided I was going to stand up and be the person that I wanted to be and I was going to be a person of courage and character. One of the things that I knew that I wanted to do was go to law school, but my family did not have a lot of money. And so I decided to apply to the dream school of my choice, which was Harvard Law School. I didn't know if I would get accepted, and once I got accepted, I saw that it was going to cost about $175,000 to go for three years. Well, I didn't have even $1,000, let alone $175,000. But I had somebody in my life who taught me, if you want to achieve something in your life, and it's within grasp, be willing to work hard. And so I knew that I wanted to go there and I decided I was going to try to become Miss America that year to pay for it. Now, I don't know if many of you watch pageants, probably you do not. You don't have to raise your hand if you do or don't, but my guess is you probably don't watch a lot of pageants. I saw one person raise their hand, that's okay, I won't say who it was. But, one thing you probably don't know is that if you become Miss America, you get a crown, but you get scholarship money. And so I knew that I had to finish in first place out of 12,000 people who would be trying to become Miss America that year. Now, I knew that it would probably be very hard to achieve that, but I knew I was willing to put in the time and the effort. And so, to make a long story short, I ultimately ended up becoming Miss Illinois and then Miss America, and I earned all the scholarship money that I needed to be able to graduate debt-free from Harvard Law School. And I tell you that because there are probably things that you want to achieve in your life. And if you share them with other people, they may say, you will never be able to do that. 
Do not let what other people think define what you ultimately want to aspire to be. If you know that there's something that you want to achieve, a position that you want, a school that you want to go to, don't let past obstacles keep you from doing that. And don't let what other people say and the fact that they may not believe in you and your dreams keep you from focusing on it. Because if I would have done that, I never would have pursued the things that I wanted to do. Right now, I actually am running for Congress. And if I win this office, I will be the first African-American woman to ever serve in Congress as a Republican in the history of our country. And I didn't know that there had never been anyone to do that. And when I heard that, I thought, this is going to be a really tough thing to do. But I think in life, if you want to make a difference and you want to be someone who counts, you have to be willing to take on those first. And so I would just leave you with the challenge today. Think about the obstacles that you have faced in your life and don't let them define you. You decide to take power over it. And then think ultimately what you want your legacy to be. You have the privilege and the blessing of going to school in this amazing institution. And what it wants to do is to train you to be a young man of courage and character and someone who ultimately makes a difference. And so you decide what that legacy is going to be and you decide that 50 years from now, people are going to think differently about you because you lived and you made a difference in the community. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to address you, and I hope 50 years from now, I'll be reading great achievements from each and every one of you. God bless.